So we'll call on the next uh, presenter. Um, an evaluation of the level of evaluation. <laughs> well, I'm all out long with Pelu at times. Say you can't even me. That's why I can't pronounce it. <laughs> From the Department of Computer Science, University of Nigeria. I'm here to present the paper title An Evaluation of the Level of Addiction to Social Media. Case study of Nigeria University, Nigeria and Graduate Students. Well, I'd like to start from here. We're talking about a social social media and its addiction. The sharp questions point out and their instruments used to test for it, the results, the discussion, the conclusion, and finally the recommendation. I'll start with social media. Well, we are, we are quite aware of what social media is all about. It's just a, a web service where individuals come in and give the details of their profile. And you can as well communicate and interact with other users and other, other individuals on the, on the same social media. Well, it's, the addiction comes in. Now, when it's an individual's uncontrollable desire to always browse, to always chat, and you find out that you can't control it, you just, you just have this love for it, you just go on and just chatting, and time keeps going, and so many other things come to play. It has a difficult and so many disadvantages. One of which is we could see the psychological effect. A case study of the Nigerian undergraduate students, students just come back from school and they just start chatting. There are so many things left undone, so many work done, so many assignments, so many household chores. They, left, they leave all this undone and they get chatting. And at the end of the day, what is the advantage of this chatting? You can't really say you get something definite out of it. You just, you just enjoy yourself. You just stop while they wait time. And well, the question that was pointed out, what is the impact of the addiction of the social media sites on Nigerian students? Well, the instruments used for this test, we had, we took a case study of an uh, institution in Nigeria and we had an example and we coined out the social media addiction test. It was adapted from the Kimbayoli's internet addiction test, where we tried to get responses from respondents. There were questions asked in the questionnaire and we got our results. As you go on, you see some of these questions and their results. The hypothesis formulated one was the purpose of browsing does not significantly influence losing sleep due to late night browsing. This, the purpose of browsing as a student does not influence losing sleep due to late night browsing. Why are you browsing? What's the purpose of the individual browsing? We try to get out from the respondents. What, what was their purpose? Many of them decided to just chat. Not necessarily for academic purpose. Most of them just tried to feel along and play along and I'm in the system. I ought to also chat. I ought to also discuss. Well, that we discovered from the analysis we used using the chi square analysis that the hypothesis was rejected. Definitely the purpose of browsing significantly influences losing sleep. Well, the second one, I moved to the second one. Losing sleep due to late night browsing does not significantly influence the odds to browse. Well, this place talk about the insomnia problem, where as a result of time, you just, you just find it difficult to sleep. And to while away the time, just open your eyes and not be able to sleep, the next alternative, the alternative some Nigerian students get to go is just to go and browse. That's the alternative. And you go out the night to just keep browsing, and you don't know when the time goes away. Coming back to lecture room the following morning, you can't be yourself. Just as we discussed yesterday, this extra pool of it in Nigeria. You go out the night 12.30 to 4.30, you just keep calling, you just keep talking, and you come to class, you start sleeping. It has the effect, effect psychologically and academically, you just drop. As we go on, you see a significant number of those students, their results dropped. But the only problem is that some of them were not willing to say the correct, the real thing. But a significant number of them were honest enough to check through. The third one is a proportion of allowance spent on browsing. Excuse me, does not significantly influence losing sleep. Here in Nigeria, in our country, but most of us use modems. Most of us recharge cards. And so we will see likewise in the study as we go on that a significant proportion of this of the allowance is spent on this. They, they, they will prefer to just get money to browse and to get money to buy textbooks. books. They prefer to get they try and look for money to just get connected and to use their money for something significant. And if it were even possible for them to even 
get connected to useful people, people that can add value to your life, it would have been better. They chat with people they can't even see face to face. They chat with people that they just they paint a wrong picture of who they are. They chat and due to this, the level of immorality is increasing. They get to meet with people they don't even know, and so many other things like that. They, these hypotheses were therefore rejected. Using the analysis we use, the chi square analysis, and it, it, it was discovered that the proportion of allowance spent significantly influences losing sleep. Well, the result, as I told you earlier, each of them are the variables we used to test for the questionnaire we distributed. The first one says, how often do you browse? We can see that a significant number of them browse twice a day and also every day. The second one says, how many social media sites do you have? A significant number of them have one or two sites, as you can see. The next one, what is the range of time spent at a stretch? A significant number have one hour, two hours. The third one, the fourth one, how often do you neglect household chores to chat with friends online? Well, as you can see, a significant number of them you were discovered that occasionally they neglect household chores. These are the few people that were willing to say their minds. As you can see, the next one, okay, how much of your monthly allowance do you spend browsing? As I said earlier, one third of them, can we see a significant number of them, one third of them spend their allowance on browsing. And also, often, how often do you lose sleep due to late night browsing? A significant number of them also pointed out their interest. Now, this is a point of research. During the past one year, have you tried to control the urge to browse or chat on these sites and not be able to count down the number of times you bread browsing? This question, few of them were willing to speak their minds. And we can tell that some of them don't really like it. But they just feel they just they just have that quest to just browse, and some of them will discover or discover that occasionally a significant number of them tried attempted it but were not able to. The last one: Do you think browsing on these sites has influenced your school grades? Here we see some of them were not ready to open up their mind. But we can say at least a significant number of them discovered that it was it drastically affected their grades. Well, this is the percentage analysis. It might be a little bit smaller for you. But it is there in the conference proceedings. You can as well check through. Well, the discussion. As you can see, the sky square, the sky square test validates all the hypotheses, meaning that the variables we tested for are quite true. The purpose of browsing significantly influences losing sleep. And then the amount of browse, the amount of allowance spent browsing. Definitely our flex influences the urge to browse. Well, we can say from there the conclusion that the addiction of the social media sites is on the increase in Nigeria, for an example. Many of them were not willing to say their minds. Many of them, of the respondents' results we got from the questionnaire, were not really sincere. But we can see from the little we're able to get that it's on the increase. And it affects them psychologically, it affects them socially. It affects that their result, their result is going down, and at the end of the day, there's nothing to show for it. The morality is on the increase. You get to talk to somebody you don't even know about. You, you disclose things you're not supposed to disclose. Unconsciously, you just start chatting with the person, and the person, you don't know the kind of person you're chatting with. Some of them, they, they, they don't know. They are just, just carried away the fact of what they put online and their details. It might even be wrong. And this a little bit has affected their health problems. Some of them get to, they don't sleep and they get addicted to it. And even if there's no credit for them to uh, air time, they are used to it. They can't sleep any longer. They don't take joy in anything. Even if it's, it's, you prefer to take your book and you the fact that you're already mindset, I want to browse. You go online looking for how to get browsing, how to browse. You don't have money and what you, you can't sleep. You just have that quest and the quest is just there. And in conclusion, I would like to say that research has shown that it's on the increase and it has negative effect on the academic performance on the students. Well, I would like to recommend from the research that there is a need for the students and institutions to reorientate students. I don't know how it is in university in Accra here, but in Nigeria, I would like to recommend that we orientate the students on how to use these sites. 
What's the real purpose of what is useful? How can we use it to positively reflect our impact on our lives and make our lives better? And also, on the part of the student, there is need for the self-discipline. Thank you very much. <laughs>